So what exactly is conventional current? Well, let's talk about it. So here's a picture of a D size battery. And this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal. And we're going to connect it to a light bulb. Let's say a very small light bulb. And we're going to attach a wire from the positive terminal of the battery to the light bulb and another wire from the negative terminal to the light bulb. Once we complete the circuit, the light bulb is going to turn on. And so what happens is electrons from the negative terminal flow towards the positive terminal. And metals, they conduct electricity by these negatively charged particles called electrons. The electrons are free to move in a metal. Now conventional current describes the flow of positive charge. So let's say if we have a conductor and if the electrons which carry a negative charge if they're moving towards the right the current is described as moving towards the left. So a positive charge would flow in the opposite direction compared to a negative charge. So therefore conventional current is defined as the flow of positive charge. So it flows from the positive terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal. And so make sure you understand that distinction. So keep this in mind. Electrons flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of a battery. But conventional current is defined as the flow of positive charge, which travels from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. But in reality, in the metal, the electrons are the particles that are actually moving. So let's say if we have a conductor, and this conductor is attached to a battery. You can also write a battery like this. The long side is the positive terminal of the battery, and the short side is the negative terminal. Now once you connect the battery across the conductor, there's going to be an electric field. And the electric field is directed from the positive charge towards the negative charge. Now a positive charge will feel a force that will accelerate it in the direction of the electric field. A negatively charged particle will feel a force that will accelerate it opposite towards the direction of the electric field. So all of the electrons in this conductor will feel a force that will accelerate it opposite to the direction of the electric field. So the electrons will be traveling towards the positive terminal of the battery. Now the protons in this uh, metal, they will feel a force that's going to push them to the right. But keep in mind, in the metal, the electrons are moving. The protons, even though they feel this force, they're pretty much fixed in place. And so current is going to be defined as the direction of the flow of positive charge. So current flows from the positive terminal towards the negative terminal. Now let's go back to the battery. In this circuit, if you want to increase the voltage of a circuit using batteries, how can you do so? And how can you increase the current of a battery? So let's compare one battery first. And let's say if we make a direct connection between the positive terminal and the negative terminal of this battery. And we're going to use a D-cell battery again. So it's a 1.5 volt battery. A short circuit is basically a circuit that has little or no resistance. So there's no other element in the circuit except the battery. So current is going to flow from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Now let's say the current in this circuit is 10 amps in a short circuit. How can we increase the voltage and how can we increase the current? To increase the voltage you need to use two batteries. Now you want to connect these two batteries in series. That is you want to connect the positive terminal of one battery towards the negative terminal of the other battery. And so if you have two 1.5 volt batteries connected like this, the total voltage across these two terminals 
will now be three volts. To increase the current, what you need to do is you need to connect two batteries in parallel as opposed to a series connection. So you need to connect the positive terminals together and then connect the negative terminals together. So let's make a short circuit and the total current that's going to flow in this part of the wire is going to be 20 amps. Now in this section of the wire you're going to have 10 amps of current that's going to flow. And also in this part 10 amps of current is going to flow as well. Now at this junction those two currents is going to meet up and the total current at this point will be 20 amps. So that means at this section 20 amps of current is still flowing and then 10 amps travel in this direction the other 10 goes this way. And so hopefully this helps you to see how the current adds up and why you get 20. So if you wish to increase the current delivered by a bunch of batteries you may want to connect them in series, I mean parallel, not series. But if you want to increase the voltage, connect two batteries in series. And that will increase the voltage, but a parallel connection will increase the current. Now you heard of the words voltage and current, but what exactly is voltage and what is current? Well, let me draw a resistor. A resistor is an element that restricts the flow of current. And let's say across this resistor, at point A, the electric potential is 20 volts, and at point B is 30 volts. Voltage is the difference in the electric potential of two points. So voltage is basically going to be the electric potential at point B minus the electric potential at point A. So the voltage across the resistor is 30 minus 20 or 10 volts. Now in what direction does current flow? Does it flow from a low potential to a high potential or from a high electric potential to a low electric potential? Current always flow from a high potential to a low potential the same way as a ball would roll down a hill from a high position to a low position. Now electrons will flow in the opposite direction of conventional current. So keep that in mind. To calculate the current, we could use Ohm's law. Voltage is equal to current multiplied by resistance. So let's say if we have a 5 ohm resistor. The voltage is 10 volts. And if we divide that by 5 ohms, the current that flows through this resistor is 2 amps. Now current is the rate at which electric charge flows. So it's Q divided by T. So a current of 1 amp tells us that 1 column of charge passes through a given point per second. And electric charge is proportional to the number of charged particles like electrons that flow through a metal. In fact, one column of electric charge represents 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So a current of 1 amp tells us that there's 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons that are flowing through a point per second. So it tells you how many charged particles are flowing per unit time. So if you increase the current, what that means is that there's more electrons that are traveling per second at a given point. And so current represents the quantity of electric charge that flows per unit time. Now let's talk about a simple circuit in which we have a battery connected to a resistor. And the current's going to flow from the positive terminal towards the negative terminal. Now as mentioned before, the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance is governed by Ohm's law. Now if you increase the voltage by adding more batteries in series while keeping the resistor or the resistance of the circuit the same, 
the current is going to increase. Voltage and current are directly related. Now, if you increase the resistance while keeping the number of batteries the same, and so keeping the voltage the same, as you increase the resistance of the circuit, the current will decrease. So voltage and current are directly related, and resistance and current are inversely related. So a circuit with high resistance usually have a very small amount of current that flows through it. And a circuit with a very low resistance usually has a very large amount of current flowing through it.